I don't know if I want to part with that beauty. Hey, I thought we already had a discussion about that. I'm thinking about a career change. I can check with the best of them now. Bada bing, bada boom. We're talking $3,500 for that book. Thousand. $35,000? Oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> you are my kind of man. Three fifty. Holy smoke. This isn't the smartest thing I've ever done. We both zeroed in. It's shame. <laughs> I'm Scott Cousin. I'm Sheldon Smithens. And we're Pickers. We travel all over Canada, coast to coast, from the West Rocky Mountains to the Eastern Shores, and all the back roads in between, looking for hidden gems in people's basements, attics, and bars. Sometimes we take a gamble, trusting our gut to make a buck. Just like the people we meet, every story is different. Not junked up. Scott, come on! It's garage sale and day. We want to be the first there. We're looking to scoop everybody and find some good things. I sort of like to wait to the last possible second to get out of bed. Do some picking. Sorry about I was strategizing with a couple of boys down the corner last night. <laughs> so much for being the first one there. Did you get your coffee black like I like it? My coffee black like you like it. <laughs> <laughs> so PEI's never been here before. Did you realize that PEI was the smallest one? That iron oxide in that red soil that makes those spuds grow so well. It's known for its potatoes. It makes sense. It's advertised as the 70 mile garage sale. It's been going on for years. There's hundreds of people that set up their stuff on the on the lawns across the island. So what would be the plan of attack? We just hit the garage show running. You go your way, I'll go my way. We grab anything that's good and then move it along as quickly as we can to the next one. Oh, there we go. 95% of the garage sales you stop back will be landfill. Do they have two tables of child's clothing at the front and a bunch of toys? Because those people are unlikely to have the kind of stuff we're looking to buy. Not a lot there, Scott. There should be a garage sale etiquette that you have to display your stuff so that as you drive by, you can decide whether you want to stop. Ah, uh, here we go. Oh, there's an old set of theater seats there. We'll just wheel the banner up. Hey, how you doing this morning? These theater seats, where do they come from? Local? I believe they came from Charlottetown. Somebody said they could have been out of the old theater that burnt. What do you want for these? I'd like to get $20 from them. Would you take 15? Uh, <laughs> all right. Done. OK. First deal of the day. Oh, that's right, yeah. Can't help but make some money on that. We should triple or quadruple our money. Buy the guys that buys the buys and, <laughs> and use the guys that sell them. That's kind of the reason I like this freestyle, you know, the garage sale. And it's a haphazard kind of a who knows what's next. Uh, looks like a drive-by to me, doesn't it? Look yeah, like a drive-by yeah, to other you. than the pumpkins look great. Yeah. And they got some corn and potatoes. See you later. You just got to move. There's enough stuff that I think it's worth a stop because every second you spend there is a second you're not somewhere else and somebody's going to get there before you and maybe get a better pick. Really tough sell. It's pretty. How much do they want for it? 200. Yeah, 50 it would have been a good buy. Exactly. There's some good stuff there on there. We rolled up to the Rainbow Lodge, the B&B &B at the side of the road. Scott. Oh. <laughs> I kind of thought we might be in a little bit of trouble because there were a lot of price tags, sort of professional price tags. We dug up that one. It was virtually a shop set up at the side of the road. See the nice little rocker? What's it got on it? Whose is it and how much is it? Probably a Patreon rocker. 75. 75. It's just top nut on that. We can't get more than that for it. You're not leaving any money on the table, that's for sure. That is the top of the market. If you have a really good day and get a really motivated buyer, you're getting top nut. But we're not paying top notch. It's cute. Very much. 
You were looking for low oh, nut that. or no nut. Well, Scott, I don't know. You know, ball rolling, eh? It's all about luck sometimes, because I spotted the big piece of pool pottery, the green vase, and as I'm going through the vase, I see the photo there. Just good luck. What are the odds of that? Calgary. It's from Calgary. And hey, where'd you get the photo from? I picked that up at an auction sale. The lady just spoke to me. She reminds me of an old Apple doll. <laughs> Strong squaw. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This was a classic scene of an old woman. Fabulous photograph, hand colored. Would you take 20 on it? Absolutely, of course. Excellent. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. That's something we could get $100 to $150 for back in Calgary. Okay. All oh, right, Scott, break the ice. Yeah. This is a classic example of guys that know their stuff, but they don't know everything. Enjoy. Yeah. Are we ready? Let's sail away. He knows the PEI stuff, and it's priced top of the market. The only reason we got that native picture cheap is because he didn't know the market. Good eye on that one, Scott. If that had been a blue nose from the same era, they would have had quadruple the amount of money they had on it. I'd say we got to head towards Point Prim. Now, I had a lead on Ivy's place. It's a little bit off the beaten path. It's pretty country here, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. But now I can't even tell what direction we're going in. If you keep turning right, eventually you go in a yeah. circle, don't you? <laughs> You want to angle left here? I believe we do. No, we Whoa. can't. No, we can't. There's no way. Is that the 211? I don't know trade right you in for a GPS. It's dead ended. Where does it dead end? Here, you take a look. Well, that helps. Look at it upside down. We're either all together going the right way or the wrong way. Excuse me. Hello. Sheldon is really good at sniffing out leads. How do you get to Prim Point? Point Prim? Yeah. 10 miles. But he's not real good at getting us to them. OK, perfect. Thanks. I love those accents. Well, Scott, I must confess, only I could get lost on an island with one road on it. <laughs> <laughs> Second point prim, right? All right, let's turn in and see what we can find. The outside was just the window dressing. Nice paint job on that door, isn't it? Yeah. Looks good. Hey, this looks promising. Ivy? Ivy, yes. Hi. Sheldon. Nice to meet you. Hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. It says art gallery out front. Is it always open as an art gallery? Yes, it is. And then you've just brought some antiques and stuff yes. in here? Yes. Well, I'm spotting some things that I'm interested in. And I found a, a set of oak steps. Great little set of stairs. What would you take for that? It's marked 20. Could you do 15? Sure. All right. I love the spool turn bed. Now, this is quite a bit. This came out of the Point Prim Lighthouse. My grandfather ran the lighthouse. Yeah. So this is something we want to make sure that stays in the family. Sure. What about the quilt on top of it? We'll go five bucks. Can't go wrong for <laughs> five bucks. <laughs> I'm looking at that. Now, there was a long, narrow photo. It was actually Canadian ships going off during the Second World War. What would you want for that, Ivy? You bring a number at me on that one. How about 70? Sure. And then the mother piped in and said, no, 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 no. What's your name, dear? Eleanor. Eleanor, are you, are you? The painter. Ah, OK. She says 80. She's the boss, I yeah. take it. <laughs> How that one she is, yeah. We'll take a shot at 80. Ivy, what is that thing hanging from the ceiling? It's a little mass for a boat. Now, what would the price be on something like that? I have to speak with my mother on that one. <laughs> She's hard, though. There's a this one is made out of uh, local driftwood. My brother Gilbert made it. Sheldon and I are snapping off. What do you want for this? I'm going 25. What do you want for that? How much would you need out of the tin? We're making deals. How's 20 for you? Five bucks. We'll go that today. Done. Yeah, sure. 20 bucks it is on the sleigh. So anyone that's got this much stuff that's sort of collectible, they got something hiding in the house somewhere. 
Yeah, you've got a, a sign on the just as you walk in the door with the guy shooting the grizzly bear. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking to myself, you know what? If we can buy enough stuff that she thinks we're serious, what do you need out of that sign? Not sure about that one. Give me an offer. <laughs> <laughs> we might get into the house. Twenty bucks. And if that happens, we might get something good. You got it. Okay. Done. We're in. She realizes that we're prepared to pay some money, and, and I think she thinks, well, maybe I got a few things that I'd like out at the house that I could let go. Okay, go ahead. The difference between a good picker and a not so good picker is the ability to work your way in to the back recesses where the other people don't get to go. Look at the views, Scott. Oh, just amazing. A, you get to see things no one else sees. Wow. Yeah, what a great room. Oh, I love it. B, there's no competition. Wow. Yeah, what a great room. Ivy, this is just incredible. You have a knack. I really like Ivy's style. Very eclectic bunch of stuff that all works. And it turns out on Prince Edward Island, it's an old established community. There's lots of cast-offs. You've got the touch, though, Ivy. She takes found objects, she takes broken things, useless things, and turns them into really interesting things. In this green painted piece. Yeah. Is that's... that something you'd sell? Uh... No, I don't think so, because it just sort of suits the little green theme. The ship's wheel, that's an interesting. Yeah, my father made that. He was a fisherman and a farmer. When farming and fishing slowed down in his later years, he got into this woodworking, and he loved to make anything that was related to nautical. You got any of those real ones hanging around here anywhere? Uh, I don't know. What's that, Ivy? No, that is the ship's lavatory. That's a quite a rare item. Pieces like that lavatory are a bit of a mixed bag. And this would be called a slosh bucket. And I'm not really a big fan of dealing in toilet wear. Oh, I see something I like. What about your trunk? And look at that great green. Yeah. The patina's nice, the picture's nice. Look, is that a touchable or an untouchable? I did the picture, and I hate to part with that You one. did a heck of a good job. <laughs> I'm hoping to make a deal on something good inside that cottage. Well, is there somewhere we can go to find something we can buy? And then I think as we were walking by, I think it was you, Sheldon, spotted that Beautiful table. Oh, yes. Truth, loyalty, union. Yeah, it's just bizarre. Like, yeah, so unusual. The Mason symbol's unmistakable. All the insignias for the Freemasons are on that. You kept all your silver or whatever it was you used for your ceremonies in there. Right. It was some sort of ceremonial table that they would have used when they were doing the secret rites of their organization. Yeah, very gothic, isn't yeah. it? I really want that table. Well, would you part with that? Really want that table. Oh, it's, it's her. If all she's using it for is a microwave holder, there's a chance we might be able to get that thing. What would you offer me for something like that? That's like something that you, did, you just wouldn't, it's hard to put a price on because there are not that many of them around. Because she didn't know what it was worth. So what did you have to pay for it when you got it? Oh, man, that's a while ago. And I didn't know what it was worth, Frank. It, it was quite a bit, maybe 275 But you know what? I'm going to see if I can almost double her money on that. You'd pay 500 bucks for something like that, right? I wasn't leaving there without it if I could help it. I have to think about it for a few minutes. He wasn't going to monkey around, so. Oh, I'll consider it, yeah. Ivy thought about it a little bit. We'll make a deal then. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Let's get the truck over here. I was late. It's a one of a kind. Thank you very much. Ivy, I am so happy to be absolutely elated. It's the best thing we've seen on this trip. That was a lot of fun with Ivy. Couldn't be two better guys. Great. That was a lot of fun. Thanks a lot, Ivy. Thank really you nice so to much. Meet you. Nice to meet you. And then she says, down the road, I got a brother who might have some things for you. Hey, Ivy. Off we go. As usual, Sheldon has sniffed out another lead for us. Gilbert. Apparently, he likes to collect driftwood, create some furniture. If he collects anything like she collects, there might be some stuff there. Here we go. This one right here? Gilbert's. Did you the tell Gilbert we were coming? 
No, surprise attack on Gilbert. Oh, you gotta love that. Yeah. Hey, look at the tides going out. It's just incredible. We strolled into the boathouse. There was all kinds of cool stuff, and I immediately noticed a guy shucking oysters. You must be Gilbert. Yes. Hi, Ivy Scott. sent us down here to see you. Oh, very good. He said good. you might have some stuff for us to look at. I'm Sheldon. Hi, Sheldon. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah, we bought a few things from Ivy. She said, come on down the road. You'd shuck us some oysters. Oh, I'm an oyster fisherman. And um, so I'm selling oysters here today, and people are just slurping them right up. I just love fishing them. I love shucking them. and I love eating them. Well, no offense, Gilbert, but quit talking about it and shuck me an oyster or two, oh, please. Sure. Yeah. You pick. I'll eat oysters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> This is going to be the best oyster that you ever had in your life. So I'm looking up and down and sideways and across, and I see up in the rafters. Looks like you get an anchor. Yeah. What's yeah. that anchor off? Oh. Can I go up and haul it down? Yeah. It's just off a small boat, sure. Yeah, no problem. That's an oldie. That's a good piece of iron, isn't it? What would you want for something like that? Oh, that there. 25 bucks. Done. Got That's a steal up that 25 bucks. Got to take one of those home, Got to God. take one of those home to Calgary. Now, Done. We don't see anchors, real anchors, from boats in Alberta. If your conscience bothers you now at that price, you can uh, <laughs> don't wreck it here. Could you not distract Gilbert from doing some shucking oh, here? Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. So you make, uh, you make furniture out of driftwood. I do. Yes, yes, I enjoy working with driftwood. So I asked Gilbert, do you have any of your driftwood furniture? And sure enough, well, I got one piece left. I got one piece right over there behind that click reel. The real killer piece that we saw was a little table. Can I, if I can interrupt you again oh. from your eating, what do you need on this piece of driftwood furniture? What do you mean? What, what you would you sell it for? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I just made it last winter. That was my last one I made. Uh, and that's the only one I have. I'm looking at the table. I want the table. It's a one of a kind. There's not going to be anything like it out in Calgary. And if Sheldon or I don't fight each other for it, we're going to put a pretty good price on that thing. This is going to be the most difficult moment of anything I've done here today, is to put a price on that table. Is that right? Yeah. You're going to have to help me. Oh, I have no idea. I don't like setting the price because one of two things happens. I overpay or I insult them. And I don't want to do either. I have a little idea. See that footstool over there with the fishing scene yeah. uh, on it? Yeah. I sold one of those to a doctor in Lethbridge, Alberta. Once he starts talking about how much he got out of a guy in Lethbridge, $360 Whoa. <laughs> for a footstool. I'm sorry, I'm out. <laughs> What's a yeah. uh, night table going to be worth? I guess it depends on whether you sell it to the guy from Lethbridge or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll have to confer with my picking partner on this. Yeah. Mm. Do you ever throw a little Worcester or anything like that on top of oh, it? Oh, no, 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 no. You no, just no, want no. the oyster. I want that straight flavor mm -hmm. that's just, just can... bubbling over. I can appreciate you don't need it. Why would you mask it? I'm always looking on walls and inside rafters, because that's where people shove signs or door pushes. Hey, did you come up with a price on the table? I'm uh, waiting for Scott. So I look up and I see some license plates. So I went and grabbed the whole pile down. Oh my word, look what he's digging into here now. I think he hadn't seen him in 20 years. You gotta hide stuff. Really oh well word. for Scott not yeah. to find it. But I opened them up, and the first one was a motorcycle, a pretty good one from the 60s. The next one was real good because it was a tractor plate. You don't see those very often. It was from the 50s. Yeah. What would you want for these two? Oh, the tractor and the motorcycle. I have no idea. No. Uh, you, you'll have to help me out again. Five bucks here. each. Ten for the pair. Uh, no, we'll have to make it. We'll have to make it uh, ten dollars each. <laughs> You're just trying to get me back because you think I got a good deal on the anchor. <laughs> well, I did give you a terrific deal on the, on the anchor. You got a couple more up there, I notice. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you want to get rid of those two? Why not? You want to collect up enough stuff 
and give you a, a, a deal for volume. Yeah, because that's a little steep okay. for me, but we'll All figure right. out on that. But let's let's go just, get the other two anchors now. It works to our benefit to package things, but even better than that, he's going to make a deal and I can just eat oysters. Maybe I should take the hot seat. And we'll let a prairie boy do a little shucking okay. for a while. Sure, I'll teach you how to do it. Yeah, I, can, I know I can shuck oysters and eat them at the same time. Hey, Sheldon. Yeah? Here's another one. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Get in there and twist. There you go. Yeah? yeah. Uh, Hello? Oh, 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 this is the way. <laughs> oh, my word. I don't know if I want to part with that beauty. Hey, I thought we already had a discussion about that. <laughs> that is a classic. That's to hold a lobster fishing boat. It'll hold really? a lobster boat. Hmm. That'll never move. Anchors yeah. away. Right. Oh. <laughs> now this old rusty one. That's, a, that's definitely made in a forge, eh? Jake. That one though, it got dropped at some point and laid at the bottom until somebody swept it back up again, I think. I probably drug that up when I was scallop fishing. So you don't have much money into it. No. <laughs> Just no, a tank no. of gas. That's right, true. <laughs> it's a great life, really, picking with Scott. <laughs> So I figure if, if 25 is on the, the one that's slightly better, whoa, than this, this should be a little bit cheaper, and then this one should be a little bit more. We've now realized there's not any one spectacular item in there that we're gonna make a bunch of money on. So now we're going for volume. So how about if we say... Say nothing, why don't you throw the table in? Uh... Oh, yeah, I'm okay. still interested. Right. I was just a bit okay. scared there for yeah, a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you don't have to be. You don't, you don't have to be. You don't. If we said $300 for, for that table and take it from there. He comes back to me on the table. I don't come back to him on it. I know we've got a chance then. If you can just come up with some price that you're comfortable with. See, I have to then talk to my partner in crime here, right, before I do that. And I'm thinking about a career change. Yeah. Pickens too hard. <laughs> I can shuck with the best of them now. This was fun to him, too, just like it was fun to us. You don't have to get that hook feeling at all. How about 300 for the table and the anchors? And then I'll give you your 20 bucks for the, the two plates. Couldn't sleep tonight. Why well, could? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I think we should just shake at three hundred and twenty dollars and I... call it a day. <laughs> and was just waiting for the shake. It's pretty hard to walk away from a shake, right? Sure. You got it. Right. <laughs> Why don't we shuck in the waist to celebrate? <laughs> yeah. Why not? To have two prairie pickers, I'll tell you, that's uh, quite a unique experience. Beautiful. I'm happy yeah. with that. Yeah. I'm happy with that. So yeah. I'm going to hold these outside while Sheldon pays. I'm just going to have another couple of oysters. <laughs> you guys are too much. Now, what are we going to do with these boat anchors? I'm just overjoyed with this. I'm glad Ivy sent us down here. <laughs> yeah. We had some fun. I'm glad too. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot. I tell you, you guys are great guys to come on the property. And... Well, not only did you make money off him, because he ate about 20 oysters, he also shucked a bunch for you out of the <laughs> night. <laughs> Thanks, Gilbert. Thanks again, Enjoy. Gilbert. All right. You take care. Yeah. yeah, but it went away happy and content as an otter. Gilbert was quite a character, wasn't he? That was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a lot of oysters. Yeah. Well, this is a hot lead. We're going to the Lucy Maud Montgomery Museum, run by uh, some relatives, Robert and Paul. When you pick for going to Anna Green Gables Museum, when I pick for going like to Wild Bill Hickok's Museum, <laughs> okay? So that's the village of Anna of Green Gables. There's Avonlea. It's a museum that's closing down, and we've been told that things are going to be sold, so we're first in there. It's going to be interesting to see if there's anything we can buy at a reasonable price. That's the key. Could be an unbelievable opportunity. I'm could, hoping. Could be the pick of the decade. Sorry, we're, we're closed. closed. Except for us. Yeah, that's right. She played in that house. Good morning, I'm Robert Montgomery. She touched the things that are in that house, and that's really important. Lucy Montgomery is a Canadian icon, 
If we can have anything associated with her, we're gonna have a real serious market for that piece. Hey, this house is where her father grew up, and she spent a lot of time here, especially as a young girl, and she writes about this house in nine of her books. Before we start, are you selling yeah. this piece by piece, or are you trying to get sell everything at once? What are you I, trying to do? I hope someone will buy it, everything. My heart sort of sinks a little bit at that point. Lock, stock, yeah. and barrel. Yeah. It would be a shame to see it broke up. We're not here to buy a house. I really like PEI, but I'm not sure I want to be in the museum business. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to pick, cherry pick, hopefully, the best items out of there that we can try and sell and make some money on. Well, let's see where we go. Why don't you show us some stuff? Okay. One of the first items that Robert showed us was a green Staffordshire dog. Re recognized by Lucy Maud fans worldwide. It was a reoccurring theme in her books. When she was a little girl here, there was a pair of these green spotted dogs. In her diaries, she says that her father would always tell her stories about them. They were uh, called Gog and Magog. Unfortunately, its mate Gog took the fall many, many years ago. And it was a reoccurring theme in her books. The piece was broken, okay? It had a huge hairline up the front, a huge hairline on the back. Sheldon would say it was a $20 item in anybody else's possession. Hey, what would you sell the dog for? Not for sale. <laughs> Robert said he'd refused tens of thousands of dollars for the piece, and he wouldn't have sold it anyway. These are kind of interesting. A rating set. They were also brought over on a sailing ship in 1775. As much as I love museums and I love uh, Anna Green Gables memorabilia, we're here to buy today. We're not here to see a museum. There's only 10 of these autographs known in existence where she drew the little cat after her name. I see that, yeah. Have you had any offers on that? In fact, just yesterday, a uh, writer uh, from Michigan was in here. He was looking at 35. Wow. And that, we're talking $3,500 for that book. 1000 $35,000? Oh, yes. Whoa. Wow. If that book's worth $35,000, I'm eating Sheldon's hat. <laughs> yeah. Are you contemplating the offer, Robert? No. Robert's showing us the major dollar pieces. Moving on. I'm kind of a cut to the chase guy. Is there something that my buddy here and I are gonna buy? I have no idea. Here's what my proposal is. Let's walk into the room and I'm just I'm just gonna point out some things that I'm interested in and you can say yes or no, they're for sale or they're not for sale. Yeah. Okay, does that work? Sounds good. Okay. Sure. Well, I'm trying to salvage either our time. This flowery cup, of course, was her grandfather's. It was a mustache cup to keep the mustache out of the coffee. Or walk out of there with something. What about your cowboy boot, Jack? That one's uh, a new one, but this yeah. one's an old one. Yeah, I'll, I might sell you the new one. I want the old one. I don't want the new one. Scott and I are telepathically thinking, let's zoom in on one piece that we maybe can buy, and we both zeroed in on Gog and Magog. Seeing as I can't buy the real green dog, what about the rug that's on the wall? It's visually beautiful. It's saleable in and of its own right. Forget the Lucy Maud Montgomery Association. It was handmade, of course. My mother hooked that. She would have been nearly 80 years old. So now we've got the story connection. We've got the family connection. What would you want for something like that if you were to sell it? Make me an offer. <laughs> Tell me what would make you happy. 300. 300. Uh, I'm getting some resistance, a mental telepathic resistance from Sheldon. How about 200 bucks? It's worth about 50 bucks, other than the fact that your mom did it with Gog and Magog on it. Let's split the difference. Two and a quarter, then? 
That's, that's, where that's a good split. <laughs> Two seventy five, uh, and we'll split the difference. <laughs> You're not going to take advantage of an Islander, I'll tell yeah. you no, that I right now. That. I'd say that's such a good piece. Let's go the two fifty, and uh, at least we're not walking out of here empty-handed. Done. Okay. And I'm happy to have that. Real happy to have that. I had no idea what it was worth, but somebody will want it, and somebody will pay. It. We don't get the chance too often as pickers to walk on the steps and walk on the floorboards that Lucy Maud Montgomery or somebody important like that walked on. And so if for no other reason than getting the rug and doing that, it was a good day. Well, Robert, it was a real oh, pleasure. Pleasure to meet pleasure you. Meet you. You're a hard yeah. man to do business <laughs> Thanks, with. Robert. We did some business. We thanked Robert and his son, Paul. They were very gracious. And I hope somebody steps to the plate buys that, keeps it intact, and does something with it. We're on our way to the northeastern corner of PEI to go see Lyons and Elaine. Lyons is quite the collector. He doesn't sell, he just accumulates and stores it. And we're hoping that we're hitting virgin territory. This would be the place. Oh, look, there's an old Dodge Dart. Love that dart swinger. Yeah. You'd be Elaine. I'd be Elaine. Hi, <laughs> I'm Sheldon. Sheldon. Leon. Nice to meet you. Tell me, what's the story with all the stuff you got? I like old stuff. I always had the feeling for old stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why I collect. We were hoping that uh, maybe we'd be doing some buying today. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> oh, God, this is going to be like pulling teeth. OK, so you're sort of new at this. Yeah, I'm new. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's a few things in here I can see already. We wandered along into that first building, and it was just loaded with stuff. Now, tell me how you end up with most of this stuff. We just uh, went to buy some wood. So you've acquired yeah. most of this stuff literally by going out to buy wood, and you see stuff hanging yeah. around, and you either buy it or ask them yeah. if you can take it. Good part of it. There's a lot of people making fun of me because I collect that crap. You for one. Me for one. <laughs> One way to find out whether we're going to do any business or not is pick an item we like, think we can make a buck on, and see if Leonce is ready to sell. Come on. I pick up a mallard duck decoy, hold it up. Oh, $10. Done. Beautiful. Please First go. deal of the day. I got some luck for the one than that. Well, then let's go look at it. Now we're in action. Oh, boy. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. Hey, a couple portholes. <laughs> we could use those. Yeah, we could always use those. We asked Leonce about them. Oh, I know they're old. So you don't know and what ship they came on? No, I don't know. These guys like to decorate their bars with them. I've seen them made as mirrors. So what would you need for something like that? Because it's you, eight bucks. <laughs> for Elaine's sake, <laughs> yeah. we'll take them. Hey, we buy every porthole in Prince Edward Island for eight bucks. I don't have to clean them, do I? Good. Good. Wow, scale is great, Leon's. They're really decorative items. Quite often used as coffee tables to put a piece of plate glass over top of them. What would it take to wrestle it from you? That's one and a quarter. 125. For that. Would you just take a hundred? Yeah, I would. Soul. And that, you okay with that, Elaine? I only paid 43. Yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I think Leonce was smiling so much because he knew what we were paying him and he knew what he paid for that stuff. Watch yourself, Scott. Looks like there's some sort of a gap hook or a harpoon or something up here. I always love to climb up and see what's up above. This Holy smokes. This isn't the smartest thing I've ever done. Don't break your neck. I'll try not. Because a lot of times people take cool things and they'll just pitch them up there and forget about them. I don't even know what's up here. Some stuff being up here for 25 years. Jeez. Wow. What is that? That's for rolling logs. Rolling logs? Yeah, I did use it when I was young. Looks big logs. That is. Yeah. PV, that's what they call it. Calling a PV. Yeah. What does a PV sell for these days? These here, 20 bucks. It's pretty cool. Who doesn't want a log roller? Yeah. <laughs> We're in for a PV You're for 20. For I'll have to get you your old logs before you go. Yeah. Well, they were having a good time. Scott and I were having a good time. How did you get this stuff up here? I get the wife to put it up when I'm busy. Would you like some help up here? I'm a little worried at this point because my pickin' buddy is up there dangling from the rafters. Scott, can you reach that tire there? 
Yeah, although it's in real rough shape. Wow. <laughs> That's a score. That's a bicycle wheel. That's a very white wheel. A very old bicycle wheel, that one. That's a rare, rare piece. I'm guessing 1880, 1890. They're early. This is very, very unique. So brace me, Leon. Hit me with your best shot. You guys are fun to do business with, I'll tell you why. You why? smile when you when you when you do business, and I love that. 25 bucks. It's for somebody that's interested in early bicycle paraphernalia, those don't come along very often. Okay, sold. Let's take it and let's keep the ball rolling. Can I ask you about the skis? What would you want for them before I make Scott crawl up there again? You know how old they are, those? Holy cow, those are oldies. Yeah. The guy that died must have been close to 100, and those were his skis. As a kid, probably. Yeah. I've handled lots of pairs of skis, and I think that might be the oldest. I didn't know he had those either. And the most folksy and probably the most valuable pair of skis that I've ever handled. What's it going to take for us to ski all the way home to Alberta? Yeah. You're going to have to climb up there and put it back on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's part of my strategy. <laughs> Oh, those are expensive. Well, I'm thinking 40 bucks. Then, oh, you'll never get that for that. No? They're made out of birch. They're hand carved. I oh, would have to get 75 for those. So they'll stay here for the wife. 60. Deal. Deal. I was going to make that deal for you. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. <laughs> and I think I want to want to deal with you on sure, this. Sure, let's go. Gas Boy of Canada. I must confess, never seen another little one like that. Where'd you find that, Leons? I find that from a local farmer around here that quit farming about 50 years ago that had that in his place. Very unusual. What would it take for Scott and I to drive this one out of here? 200 bucks. I'd like it better at 150. Yeah, I guess I would. At 100 and a half, that's gold to a picker. That was good fun. <laughs> that was fun? So where do we go from here? Well, we'll go to the barn, there's a few things up there. Oh my God. Don't break your neck. Don't trip over it. <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen so much stuff. You got more hair than a lot of oh. stores now. You are my kind of man. Yeah. In one small place, oh, you'll find everything in here. Wow. I found a treasure here. What do you have? Solid brass, side, yeah. the whole thing's made out of I that. can tell by the green on the side of it <laughs> that it's brass. That's right. Thirty-five cents. There was nothing over it all of them. It was in working condition. What do you think, Scott? Do we want to haul a cash register uh, across the country? Only if the price is right. I had a guy here that offered me seven hundred for it. Probably a little too rich for our blood. Yeah. Yeah. But I wouldn't let it go. So we left that one sit there and carried on picking. Leonce, would you part with this? We'll do 25. Great. But the dynamic is going good for us right now. Five bucks on the tractor plate? Yeah. So, can have it. and how about the mini ship wheel? Oh, that's a pretty ship. So we're just holding something up and saying, how much? 10 bucks. Done. We're making deal. Five bucks? Can have Perfect. It. In Alcox from England, I can deal. What would you like for that, Leonce? 60 bucks for the three? Yeah, I'll let it go. Plus the deal. Oh, 25 bucks. Settle on 20. 10 bucks on your 78 record player? There. 10 bucks? Well, nobody plays 78s anymore. If you double that up, you might get it. Well, 15. Yeah. Not 15, I'll give it to you. Okay. Deal. Wheeling and dealing. <laughs> Where did you get this? Oh, that's a long history off that one. It was hard to get. <laughs> I'm sure it was. It's in decent shape, it's a nice decorative thing. It's not nearly as heavy as it no. looks. It's probably maybe 20 30 pounds. pounds. 20, 20, 30 pounds. I know those things sell for a lot of money. How much would it take to take this out of the attic and put it in our truck? And I get that sly little <laughs> 450. That is a killer piece, an absolute beaut of an item. That's a special helmet. <laughs> 350? <laughs> so. And now so, you got to. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, we'll pack our stuff up. We'll see you outside. I can't stop thinking about that cash register because you 
just don't see those little ones very often. We're losing our light rapidly, so we're gonna throw these things in the truck. I thought, you know what? And if I can get that baby out to the truck, I might have a chance to get it. Wait, wait! Leon, so I just couldn't, I couldn't get leave without one more time saying, 500, going once. Yeah, deal. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Love that cash register. Love that deal. Perfect way to end the deal. Hey, thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks again. Thanks. All right, bye-bye. That was the most fun pick I think I've had in a long, long time, maybe ever. Man. Why do we keep buying heavy stuff? You got to drive with that on. Good pick. Wow. <laughs> you don't get those every day, do you? Yeah, you know you had a good day when you're leaving when the lights are gone. So we're off to see Aubrey Bell, local appraiser, see how we did on some of those picks. Always like to get somebody else's opinion. This must be the place. We always buy stuff with the hope we're gonna make a lot of money on everything. And, you know, sometimes we don't do as well as others. Well, Aubrey, we sure appreciate you taking a look at a few things for us. He's got a pretty good feel of the market, and I'm curious to hear what he's gonna say. It's a bit grimy and a bit dirty, but it's a pretty good one, we thought. Yeah, you know, the National Cash Register is uh, very popular. Can you open it up for me? Oh, yeah, perfect working condition. We'll just bring in a sale for 35 cents. 500? Yeah, deal. <laughs> All right. Boy, I'll tell you, that's going to be a real fine for something. You could be into it to 1,000, 1,500. Excellent. Yeah. Take a look at this uh, kind of unusual. Uh... Masonic piece. You just never know what somebody's going to do appraising a unique item like that. Pretty nice. Eh? They don't make them like this anymore. The collectors of that kind of material tend to be rather cautious when it comes to spending a lot of money. So that could hold it back a little bit. I'm not sure what you paid for this one. Scott uh, threw out $500. We'll make a deal then. If we were to have it in the shop, we'd probably be trying to retail it in the uh, $1,500, $2,000 range. Ka-ching! Where I'm coming from, I'm gonna put a massive price on that thing. And if somebody says, how can you get to that number? I'm gonna say, go find another one. Now, I got a piece of oddball for you. And here's, here's the one we're, we're really curious yeah, about. It, it's got a connection to Prince Edward Island, of course. To me, a good appraisal is one that's based upon other similar items selling. Aubrey, we got this off the wall of the museum that is in the house of Lucy Maud Montgomery's grandparents. Much more difficult when we're talking about maybe an appraisal based on provenance or a unique item that there's not a lot to compare to. This is a really nice piece. That hooked rug by itself, I could see it retailing for $200, $300, $400. Mm. But because it was made by a, a relative of Lucy Maud Montgomery, that moves it into a whole different plane. There are a lot of serious Lucy Maud Montgomery collectors, and, and I can see any one of them being interested in having a piece like this. It's something we paid $250 for. I don't see any reason why you, you, you couldn't get at least $750, $1,000, maybe even $1,500. That's great news. Ka-ching! The bells were just going off. I think if we let him stand there and look at it for about another 10 seconds, it would be up to 2,000 for the loan. We really appreciate that. Every once in a while, we hit on a treasure, and that was the piece of Prince Edward Island. We bought some great stuff, but that's the piece we're going to score on. What would you want it for? 500 bucks. Selvin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyone you know? Oh, I, I could scare you. Scare me. A bit of a whirly gig up here. Go pick, Scott. Go find <laughs> us a treasure. Don't you know what's to give us a return? So give me a good price. It's always tough to part with a good item. That's a beaut. I'm Scott Cousins. I'm Sheldon Smithers. We're picking. We travel all over Canada, coast to coast, from the West Rocky Mountains to the Eastern Shores, and all the back roads in between, looking for hidden gems in people's basements, attics, and bars. Sometimes we take a gamble, trusted our gut to make a buck.
just like the people we meet, every story is different. Not just us. Don't jump, Scott. It's not that bad. Beautiful morning. We're in Peggy's Cove, Nova Scotia. Oh, you got to come here. Check this out. There's a big swell coming in. Yeah, there you go, yeah. Let's head back up, grab the map, and take a look and see where we're going. Nova Scotia, here we come. All right, several picks. OK. Up near Truro, we're going to Great Village. OK. See, look what you're doing to my map. I should be driving this time. Why? You do the navigating. Well, at least I can fold the map properly. What about a uh, little wager? What are we got? We should find something that's just the ultimate representation of Nova Scotia. How about if we do this? We're on the ocean. When we're making the bet, it's going to be something to do with the sea. It's not who gets it first, it's who gets the best. Sounds like I should be the winner of this one, so I think I'd like the ultimate meal. Well, I guess if I win, what are you going to buy me? How about your weight in Nova Scotia brew? <laughs> I won! <laughs> So we've got our route planned. Should be exciting. We're heading over towards Grand Village. We're going to hear there's a bunch of antique stores, there's a bunch of stuff that we may be able to pick something for ourselves. Big Village was a fishing town. Well, it's now in shipbuilding. Little Acadian Village. That's the story on the Acadians. About 200 years ago, the French got kicked out of this part of the world. Why? They wouldn't swear allegiance to the king. Oh, uh, okay. And they moved them all. They located them down along the coast, right? The Carolinas, Louisiana. Right, right, right. So today's pick, we're going to see Claire. Claire's got a shop. When you're going to an antique store, you just never know what you're going to find. You might find some really cool stuff. You might find nothing that you can buy. Oh, look at the nice old church. Wow, that thing's going to be 100 years old. Oh, and the mist on the river. Yeah, it's just beautiful. Oh, wouldn't you love to be in there with a fly rod? This has got to be it. Let's see if we can just check her out. Oh, you're dashing, aren't you? You want to win the bet. Afternoon. Hey. You look like real cowboys. <laughs> Hi, Scott Cousins. How are you? Hi, Scott. I'm Sheldon. So what's the story? I love buying, I love going out, digging through old attics, barns, garages, things of past. They're so colorful compared to the things that you see today. We're picking for resale, open to a yeah. little bit of negotiating. Oh, sure. It's wholesale for Calgary down here anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Antique stores in this part of the world are for tourists. And uh, generally there are high prices, but Scott and I are looking for that, that oddball piece that maybe is out of its market, can I ask you about the wall pocket? That'd be a local piece, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. I'm not going to go less than 185 on that. Just great colors, yeah, blue, nice yeah. board deco. But 245 bucks? Yeah. Well, wow. Done. Scott and I were both a little bit dejected. I'm not sure what that is. Look at that. Look at the way it's made. It was one of those high chairs that folds down into a chair as well. And look at the gears on the side of it here. Kid puts his finger in there, he's losing his whole hand. I could take a pass on it. I see this nice little perfume sign. Where did you get the Cody sign? Seems to me that came out of the attic of an old house. I can tell that it's old, 30s, 40s. If you're a perfume collector, that's a piece of advertising you want to put in your cabinet. Would you go 10 on that? What do I got on? 12. Sure. OK. Yeah. yeah, thanks. A little icebreaker. What about this? King Cole tea? Yeah. It doesn't have an image of the king on it, but it is King Cole. Yeah. King Cole is probably the most collectible advertising out of this area. Very scarce, very expensive. How much? Like a $20 bill would take it. Yeah, I think we can do 20 on that. I see Sheldon snooping around on the one side. There's not much more for me on this side, so I think, what the heck, I'll just go upstairs, see what there is upstairs. What you often find is big things upstairs, and that's what we found was something really big and really cool. Bit of a whirly gig up here. Got British decals on the bottom from the Second World War. 
In Nova Scotia, it's almost a tradition to have a whirly gig. It tells you the wind direction. It also gives you an indication of wind speed. So what would you need out of that? I could live with 100 bucks out of that. 75? On a rainy day. <laughs> it's a rainy day. Shake yeah. his hand, Sheldon. All right. Why not? Why not? 75, 75 it is. Thanks, Claire. Well, I noticed you got a Five Roses flower sign in the window. Now, how much is that doggy in the window? You can start at 350 and go from there. I'm going to take a look at your Five Roses flower sign. Rusted all the way around. And the yeah. guy thought he was doing everybody a favor by covering it up with a crappy paint job. Hey, you're really starting to act like one of my customers. Why? Just picking it apart so you can get it really cheap. No, I can't get it cheap enough. That's the problem. He told me 350 right off the top. I wasn't paying 350 I could scare you. Yeah? Scare me then. Like, really scare me. Oh, it might be nice to see that somewhere else, so. If I said I'd give it to you for $125. I couldn't say anything except shake his hand. Deal. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's Good. go check the okay. other shop out. Good news was Claire had a booth in a group shop just across the road. Hey, Claire, you've got a nice piece of tramp art here. Yeah, that's a neat piece. I haven't had that too long. In the 1930s, when fellows had no work, but they occasionally could come up with little bits and pieces of wood, they crafted things into picture frames, uh, wall pockets, and this particular one was a little tramp art box. What could you do for a couple of Prairie Boys on that? It's 115, I'd say uh, 85. Did you say 75? Sure, why not? Yeah. You've seen everything in here. The only other place is my warehouse. As we were walking out the door, we met a local picker by the name of Walter. He was going in with a couple of items, and sure enough, uh, we struck up yet another deal. Walter had a telescope that he was very reasonable on at $50, and another little unusual handcrafted mahogany box, all slotted for 22 shells, and there was a little target as well inside the box. 20 bucks, couldn't go wrong. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a yeah. pleasure doing Thank business you. with him. I'm pretty excited about going to the warehouse because he's told me he's got some advertising signs. When you get into the inner sanctum, that means you're getting into stuff that the person loves or hasn't priced. Nobody's seen it. And you're going to get first crack at it. For the most part, I'm seeing the start of a good bonfire. Hey. That's about as crude a, a set of slots as I've ever seen. <laughs> Beautiful. I've decided to start a history of skiing museum. These look like a pair of boards that some guy pointed at the ends, banged on a little strap of leather for the harness, and, uh, well, yeah, for wall hangers, they don't get any better than that. 20 bucks is the going rate for skis today here in Great Village. I guess you can have them. 20 bucks it is. Yeah. Spotted another sled. I seem to be uh, specializing in winter sports. Um, you should start a sled museum yeah. too. Holy cow. It weighed about 60 pounds. Man, could you imagine the speed you'd get going down oh, the hill yeah. on that? Couldn't walk out the door without at least bargaining on it. What about 60? I don't think I want to let it go for that guy. What so. about 70? <laughs> you really want that thing, John? wants it, see? No, well, 70. 70 bucks, it's a deal. Done. I saw a little piece of wood on the way out. It was the top of a Victrola gramophone player. It's sort of a nice thing, even just by itself. It's a isn't sign, it? yeah. What do you want for that? Take that home for 10 bucks. Why not, right? If nothing else, we can throw it in the fireplace. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> we pretty much picked the warehouse. And there was one last shop that we thought, mm, maybe there might be a buy or two left. So you know the person that owns that? Renoir, yeah, I spoke to her. I can get you in there. The owner of the store's not there, but she's got somebody sitting in on it. Apparently, according to Claire, he's got the authority to sell everything, and he's going to let us upstairs into the inner sanctum. That's where you're trying to go, was the inner sanctum. We ignored the store, went straight upstairs. Grant's here, and I guess he's looking after it for Renoir, so I'm going to leave you with him. I walked up, and he's holding on to a cane. Uh, like, I'm looking at this thing he got in your hand. So what can you tell me about this? Well, can I, I got that off an old girl down the road here, actually. She's probably 
75 years old or something. And that's just a big, ugly, diseased piece of wood exactly. somebody carved out. Yeah. But it feels so good, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. The years and nice years wear. of wear and somebody holding it and rubbing it. I love canes. I've always loved canes. You got 25 on it. Would you do 20? I think I could go 20 on that. Sure. Perfect. I think that's a $65 cane at a show any day. Oh. Hey, I spotted fine. something good. That is fun. Birds of Canada. Birds of Canada. It's the sort of thing that would hang up in a classroom. It's got uh, 35 on this one. It's a rare item. I've never seen one. Can you do a little better? A little. Dirty. Done. Can't go wrong with something like that. That's a good item. I want to ask you about this. Quite a nice ladder back. Probably locally made. Colchester County. It's all oak. Could you say 75? Yeah. Thank you very much. Great. That's about as folksy as it gets. That's a killer 1870s wall pocket. It looks like it should be cheap, but I, I'm guessing it's not going to be. 150. I'm going to shake it at 150. I think it's worth that. Is this a jigging weight? Yeah, it's an old card jig. What would it take to buy that? Uh, I'd like to get 25 for it. 20? 20, yeah, we can do 20, sure. Good, we'll do well on that. We should double up easy. Can I touch this boat? Yeah. Very nice. So would that just be a toy some guy made for his son, or I would it be a model? So. I don't think it would be a model. It's got the brass hole here where the anchor comes out of it. The craftsmanship of that boat was wonderful. Not only could you visually see the detail, but that just had quality written all over it. The best thing in the place was a boat. I know we're going home with it. The only question is, what are we getting it for? Sheldon, what do you think? Do I don't do know. It? It's handcrafted. It is nice. What would you need to get out of that boat? Oh, geez, I don't know. Uh, 275. Would you go 225? 225. Leave a little room in it for and, us? And yeah. throw in the cobwebs. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'll toss that stuff in. Uh, yeah, 225, yeah. That's Excellent. Right. That's a good good piece. The boat was the closest we came today to that bat. Unbelievable the amount of work this person put into this little thing. It was almost there, but I know enough that I wasn't going to say that I'd won the bet because I would have got a slap in the back of the head. That was a nice piece, but it's going to take something extraordinary for this bet to get decided. <laughs> It's big, and the image is nice. That looks good on you, bud. That's just a fun thing to have, right? We ended up having a good afternoon, good time. Claire, thanks a lot again. Good I good really shot. appreciate it. Good to do good business to with you. Good nice to meet you. Thanks, Claire. Thank you. Yeah. I think we even got Claire to smile at the end. We had a good time. Hey, well, that was good picking. Yeah, that was excellent picking. I really like the Whirly Gig. The more I look at it, the more I like it. And the more I like it, the higher the price. <laughs> Michael and Janet, they live in Halifax, and uh, they're garage sailors. Michael, I believe, has been collecting for 25 years. What's he collect? It sounds like 20th century collectible. That's my bailiwick. Yeah, that's why I thought you might be excited about this one. OK, slow down, slow down, slow down. Here we are. I think it's this old right green here. one right here. Hello, welcome. Hello. I'm Sheldon. I'm Janet. Hi, Janet. Scott? Hi, Sheldon. Hi, Sheldon. You'd Hi, be you. Michael. What do you have? And why do you want to get rid of some um, of them? We've got a bit of everything, and we've got too much. Has anything ever gone out the door or just in? We have a flea market once every 15 we have a street years. street market. And when was the last one? About 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what you got. Here we are. Wow, there's a lot of stuff around here. <laughs> Where do we start? It's far more fun for us to go to a yard sale or a flea market than it is to go to a mall. What about that boot jack? Go to her. <laughs> She's a recast. How can you tell? The original ones are just a little crisper in all details. <laughs> this is something completely different. What's it supposed to be? Quack. Oh, 
now I see it. That is the ugliest duck I have ever seen. One of the problems with this kind of a collection is these people are crows. They got lots of little things they picked up from everywhere. It doesn't matter whether it fits or doesn't fit. Uh -huh. What is that they find a place for? I can't tell them made 100 years ago or last week. And that's what we call a crow in the business. I think that was a wedding present. So nice, I just can't imagine <laughs> that I could make yeah. an offer on it. At this point, we're having some fun. I'm just scrambling to try and find something that I really, really like. I was digging around somewhere and I saw this little bird. That's a good piece of folk art. Be a float that would be used for lobster traps. And uh, just typical Nova Scotia. And what's it gonna take for us to let this little seagull fly back to the prairie? At least 500 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether to laugh or cry when you say that. <laughs> Michael and Janet are an eclectic couple. They've been collecting for 25 years. So when you get into a place like that, you're looking for the diamond in the rough. What do you think, Sheldon? 30 bucks? 45 and you can give me 40. How about 35? Sure. Excellent. We have to make room and sometimes it's good to let things go. <laughs> what would you want for this goofy little box? What are you going to offer me? It's got a patent deed on it of it looks like 1889. So are you prepared to let it go for eight bucks? 10 bucks. Will you? Yeah, sure. Sold. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> We have got a reclining, vibrating couch. Really? Yes. <laughs> Which I think one of you should try. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, remember the bet. Good point. I'm hoping there's going to be a real good item. Seeing lots of little knickknacks, but we're still looking for that pearl amongst swine. Now, that gives cheese ball a, a whole new meaning, doesn't it? Yikes. I'm always looking for something cheesy and kitschy, and there's nothing more kitschy than a naked woman telephone. Anyone you know? There's a treasure. Ooh. I've never seen one. I've dealt in a lot of telephones. If I've never seen it, haven't done this for nearly 30 years, it's got to be scared. Oh, oral sex. Yes. <laughs> The, the erotica phone makes any conversation a sexual experience. If you read on, it would say, sculpted by an Italian sculptor. Oh, yeah, made by Michelangelo for yeah. the Pope. You have to curl her into you. I'm not sure I want to do that. <laughs> I think Janet might be a little kinky. <laughs> so how much would it take to pry the erotica well, phone. Well, from that you. I would take about 150. Are you serious about that price? Do you think that's too little? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Would you consider 100? I can't believe you said it's that. just so unique. It is unique, and that's yeah. why I wouldn't consider 100. <laughs> I've never seen another one like it. Even though I can't buy it right now because I think he's a little stiff on the price, I'm coming back to it later. How about pipes? Are you interested in pipes? I, I see a skull that I'm interested in. I love anything that has to do with a skull, and a lot of other people do too. I saw what looked like a little pipe head. What would you need to get out of the skull? Oh, 15. Done. Oh, I see what you're after. Yeah, speaker yeah. grill. It could have been a speaker grill for a Pontiac car, because that's very similar to the Pontiac design. That's just a neat thing. Get a nice piece of wood, screw it in, it's a piece of art. If you can let it go for 25 bucks, that's, you know, it's it's just a bit or a piece. The only thing I'm paying for really is the Indian here and the design there. Add five more bucks on, you've got it. You are a painful man. You get, you get to that point where I can't let it go. I love that thing. So I'm gonna price that at hundred and a quarter once it's put together. And if I don't sell it, I don't care. If you look in that little cabinet there, Scott, that is the magnifying glass that Sir Isaac Newton, when he magnified the apple, he discovered wormholes 2,000 years before the Enterprise did. You tell tall tales. I, think <laughs> I wouldn't believe him if he told me that it was light outside. He has a story for everything, and, he, and he's got a poker face, which is, that's a dangerous combination. What would you want for it? 20 bucks. How about 15? 17. 14. 16. 15. 25. 15. <laughs> 15. 18, 15. 
you were already at 17. Well, you, were, you went lower. And then you went 60. Yeah, but you went lower. Okay, again. 12. 16. You went down as low as 16? 16, 60. Maybe okay. Janet yeah, and I will go for tea and you <laughs> fellows yeah. duke it out. I, mean, I liked it because it was real primitive. What do you think, Sheldon? I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Janet wanted me to try on some vibrating goggles. She thought that was sort of a carry-on from the chair. <laughs> it's doing it's... wonders for my gums. <laughs> you still wear It was actually quite the sensation. Your, your nasal passages uh, got quite the workout. I've got a, a blowfish with a sombrero, which I'm sure you'd be oh, interested in. Oh, there's a class thing. There's sort of a cool little bird hanging from the bottom of it. That is a Cree Indian piece. If that's proper native, it's cool. Uh, I'm I, just saying I don't know if I want to pay to find out I'm wrong. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be the first time. Maybe we'll come back to that when we come back to the erotophone. Maybe I'll have softened you up by that point in time. <laughs> back in the corner, he's got a piece. I know exactly what it is as soon as I see it. It's an old folk art piece. It's a weird item. Somebody spent hours and hours and hours making it out of old cigarette boxes. Like a bit of tramp art, as far as I'm concerned. Eyes of eyes, how much would I need to take this home? 15 bucks for that, I think. Oh, wow. That's Too fun. little? Yeah. 20. No, no, you have to I shake have hands to with shake her. Here. She's yeah. the 20. <laughs> hey, you're strong. Before we leave this room, I've got a proposition for you. And given what I'm going to offer you on, I think proposition's the right word. 150 for the erotophone, and you throw in the bird. That's a great offer. <laughs> <laughs> OK. OK, thanks. Excellent. <laughs> it's a very appealing image. It would be from a, a piece of furniture, 19th century. Hung it up with a wall. Would you part with that, Michael? For the right price, I guess. <laughs> what would the right price be? You're gonna have to tell me. 20 bucks? Tops. 20 dollars? Look at the workmanship that went into that. Just feel it. That's solid oak. I'll tell you what, I'll give yeah. you 2,000 if you can find the piece of furniture and <laughs> yeah. came off them. I've got absolutely no qualms about being ruthless with Michael because he's being ruthless with me. That is a nice little clock. Beautiful objects. What would you want for that? Oh, that would be 200. <laughs> Come on, seriously. When he said 200 dollars, I thought I was going to fall over laughing. I'd probably pay 35 bucks for it. 50. I'm grinding them on the price on a few things, but this is not rare stuff. I think you got it hiding up there. I forget about things. If it's in a workroom, how emotionally attached can you be? If that was in the hands of somebody that went down with the Titanic, it might be <laughs> worth 200 bucks. You don't know the story. <laughs> probably not. Yeah. Yeah. 40. They're hard. They, they are hard. hard. Yeah. We're pickers. We're going to resell. But he has to afford a better hairdresser, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I don't have a hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> he had a whole bunch of stuff in this box. Sheldon and I nearly broke our backs getting it onto the floor. Yeah, here, let me take those out of the way. Yeah. What did you need for the base? Um, 25 bucks. Is it worth it to us? Yeah, what the heck. The telescope base works perfectly with the telescope we just picked up in Great Village. My ex-Norwegian commando ski coat. Oh, wow. Michael showed me a nice old coat he said was sewed out of two sheepskins. I bought it from a, a, an army and navy store in London about 30 years ago. I don't right. think you could wear the coat and the chapeau at the same time. <laughs> in the old days, people were smaller. So what do you want for this, baby? 50 bucks. Deal. Oh, he's taking the coat. Oh, it's exciting for me because I won't be freezing my ass off in Winnipeg. Okay, let's go. We've had a good day and it's been a lot of fun and, and the guys have been great. We have some great items going back to Alberta. I really like the folk art piece. That one's a fun one to take home with us. I don't think it get cold enough anywhere but Alberta for that. I love that skull pipe. Janet and Mike were really nice. <laughs> oh, Jesus, <laughs> man. <laughs> People like that kind of make picking a lot of fun.
collectible shop here in downtown Amherst. I've always been a collector. I've always liked going to yard sales, auctions, picking through, old stuff. Howdy. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. What's your name? Paul Farrell, Skippy. I see the things I love to see, buy, sell, trade. And I thought, you know what, I got a goofy item here that I wanted to bring by and see if you knew anything about it. How goofy's goofy? It's pretty goofy. You want to go inside? Yeah. Are you ready for the unveiling? I think so. Have you ever seen anything like that? Never seen nothing like this before. I've dealt with a lot of phones over the years. It's not the oldest phone I've seen by any means, but it's certainly the most bizarre phone I've ever seen. I wonder what the wife would think when I'm talking on it all the time. I know what, what my wife would she think. She would say, there's nobody there. Hang the phone up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, do you have any idea what you'd pay for it? I would pay somewhere in the vicinity of 175 to 250 for it. I'm going to be blunt with you. I'm going to give you my bottom line. I wouldn't sell this for less than 350. And I know that's a tough price for a dealer to pay, but I'm sort of thinking this is for a personal collection with a big price tag on it. Would you take three, 300? You know what? You're getting fairer by the minute, and I hate to say no, but I, I'm holding firm at 350, and I totally understand it if you don't want to pay it. But I think there's a big upside in this, particularly if you've got a shop where it's on the shelf, on display every day. I think we got a shelf a deal, buddy. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm happy about that or sad about that. I'm gonna keep it myself for my desk, my office. Let's me call my banker and get some money sent over. <laughs> hey, you got a beer for me. Perfect. Yeah. How'd you do? You're not going to believe it. Hit me. 350. Good job, man. <laughs> now I don't have to answer my wife's question as to why I bought it. Yeah. It's a win win. <laughs> We're off to the Bay of Fundy area of Nova Scotia. Apparently, Garth is just a, an all-around collector. What's he got? Garth's got uh, jute boxes. That's always good. Pinball machines. Sometimes good. Yeah. <laughs> Some gas pumps, automobiles. Garth's got it all, it sounds like. So why is he having us in? I think he's trying to lighten the load. I sure hope he's trying to lighten the load. Oh, yeah, there's that the gas be... pump. That's always a tip-off, isn't yeah. it? Hey, do I know you? Not yet, but you will. Oh, good. What's your name? Scott. Yeah. And yours? I'm Sheldon. Hi, Smithers. Sheldon. And your guard. Is that? Yeah. This property goes back to 1761, and the house is 1892, and the goodies are here from the 1880s on up. Where's a good place to start? Well, you can start right here in the garage if you like. Let's do it. I'd let you drive if we had this truck right here. You'd be the most noticed pickers in North America. Sheldon and I would have both loved to drive away in that GMC truck. You should see the cab. We'd be comfy in here. <laughs> I gotta go take a look. Wow, I could take this home happily. Yeah. What do you need out of it? A lot. More than yeah. I can afford? Yeah, possibly. <laughs> What we need is a sponsor to buy it for us. So is something like that for sale? The Buckingham door push? Uh, we could talk about it. Yeah? Yeah. What would we talk about? 
Well, that's up, to, that's, up, that's up to you. I'm always apprehensive when I'm dealing with collectors. I always have a good time. Trying to pry some of that stuff out of their hands can be a bit tough. Retail on it's probably 100 to 100 and a quarter on it. We could probably do 60 on it. No. OK. When something's screwed to somebody's wall, it's always harder to get than if it's sitting against a wall. Old Ford dealer sign. Genuine parts. Hey, that's a great sign, Scott. It's a little rough, but it's still a Ford sign. What era would you say that one's from? 30s. That's what I thought. 30s exactly. or 40s yeah. at the latest, because yeah. of the way the Ford insignia yeah. is. Mid 30s. And you got it hiding behind a couple of boxes. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> <laughs> that usually means it's not going to be nearly as dear. Yeah, but... right. Probably 400. Uh... Garth hasn't given me the indication he's not selling anything. What he's told me is I'm not selling anything dirt cheap. Do you have any room to move on the Ford sign? Don't you know it's better to give than to receive? So give me a good price. Oh, it goes both ways, does it? <laughs> yes. Just to help you along the way and, and, and make things workable for you, I'll take 350. You got to start somewhere. That's a good place to start, isn't oh, yeah. it? Yeah. It broke the ice. We got a sail under our belt. We got the wheels going now. I see you got a little cheese ball thermometer here. It'd be about 968, 69. Of course, because everyone loves girls in bikinis. So that's got some emotional attachment to you. Give me an idea what it's worth to you, and I'll tell you. <laughs> Give me an idea what you want, and I'll tell you if it's worth that much to you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, $30. I think we're going to have that for 30 bucks. I'm with like you, Scott. Yeah. Deal. Is that hard, cold cash? As hard as you can get it. <laughs> we're going to put it in the cooler for All a while. All right on. Perfect. Let me just take a look at the front. I want to see if there's anything out there. Usually, that's a bad sign, because if it's on the front, you like it even better. <laughs> Got a perk there. That's a beautiful sign during the year. You're real attached to that because I am too. Now, is that from this area? No. It's US and Canadian. It's US and Canadian. Yes. Okay. There's a whole lot of early tire manufacturing companies. You've got to purchase one of them. Out of business since probably the 50s or 60s. This one's a rare sign when they were screwed to the outside of buildings. They got shot, they got stolen, they got used for insulation in barns. You know, that just didn't survive. If you were to sell that, what would it take to get it out of you? That would be probably between $500,000 and $500,000. I'll give you 501. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and one what? <laughs> I'd like to take that back to Calgary with me. You work your little mind on that thing and think about it for a while. I'm going to hit you with that a little later, you know. Yes, I know. Wow. Gentlemen, you're now in the building we call Memories. Wow. And this building is surrounded by artifacts that go back to the 1880s and up to the 1980s. You got two jukeboxes. Yeah. Are they both 60s? That one over there is a 1954, and it's completely mono. Stereo and jukeboxes only came about in 1958. Now I'm assuming because it's sitting here lit up that it's likely not for sale. Likely not. And if you were going to sell it, what would the value be? Around 5,000. You find something, Scott? I may have. Now that's a real nice piece of porcelain. What would you need out of that? <laughs> All you can give me. <laughs> the reason we ask people to set the price first is because we're afraid that if we're too low for them, we may insult them and that may change the dynamic. I'll make you happy. 150. If you can avoid any negative thought, you're doing yourself a favor. Okay, 150. 150, it's a deal, no tax. Okay. Yeah. Scott. Yeah. Did you see this scale? I did not. You got your weight, and then by your weight, it tells you how high you actually should be. And according to this, <laughs> well, I ain't getting I on it. <laughs> I should be six foot eight playing basketball. Let's see where I fall. I'm off the scale. <laughs> it's blue. It's mint. It's never been painted. It's always been indoors. Would you part with that? That, that would be tough. It's always tough to part with a good item. Being a Canadian scale and being in such great shape, it's just a real collectible item. So if somebody was going to pry you on that, what would they have to pry you with? Oh, we're talking a bunch. Yes. So you're talking about two to three grand? Yes. You know your retail price is really good, but we're trying to make some money on it. Yeah. I'm going to leave the scale, maybe come back to it if the opportunity presents itself. Go pick, Scott. Go find <laughs> us a treasure. I'll distract him. 
Oh, you, you saved that, that one. You saved, saved it. I love a pinball game. Pick or no pick. Nice shot, Scott. That sound, that's music in my ears. Sounds like a winner, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the museum is just a fun place. The jukeboxes, the pinball machines, the memorabilia. Elvis is in the building. I love the little lip thing. That is so Garth likes to have fun. Thank you very much. <laughs> wow, that's a big Coke cooler. That's a beaut. You know, you see a hundred of the one single half ones yeah. for every one of these. I'm not sure I've ever seen a white coat cooler with red lettering. Anyone would want that in their rec room. I'm guessing if you had to buy one of those, it cost you about a grand? Yeah. Great thing. It's just too darn big for us to haul across the country. And you're not probably selling it anyway, because you'd have a big space there. No, you'd have to... Yeah? Can yeah. we open the door? Yes, we can. That is a good looking thing. Yeah. Geez, you're tempting me on this one. You're tempting me. I'm looking for unusual, and this is unusual. We're going to walk around and think about this one. Anything down here? Yes, there is. Something of uh, extreme interest, not what you expect. So now he's got me hooked. I'm really dying to see what's up. This here is not what you're expecting. I don't know what I'm expecting. Whoa. I have no idea what that is. Something that the government at the experimental station in Dartmouth made this up with all these different rudders and so on and so forth. It's an underwater apparatus, but I can't give you the exact name of it. So there's one it's, of the fins. It's one of those picker finds. It's the ultimate fishing lure, isn't it? I'll tell you. I can't tell them exactly what it is, only what I think it is. Whether it chases a submarine or comes under the water and goes after a plane, I don't know. Where'd you find it? I bought it at auction. At auction? Yes. Good, we're not going to get in trouble for buying it then. No. Yeah, right. <laughs> nope. Nothing top secret no. in here. No. Why do you still have it? Because you haven't bought it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give us a shot. That is the absolute sleeper. There could be unbelievable upside and zero downside. So how much do you want for it? 200. You know what? I've bet on worse nags at the at the horse races. I think we should own this for 200 bucks. It's probably $200 worth of aluminum in there. Yeah, there is. I think we could turn that into one of the coolest laughs you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to shake you on that one, too. Absolute no-brainer. And we now own it. <laughs> I don't know if it's the best thing I've ever bought. It's certainly the weirdest thing I've ever bought. Wow, there's a lot of stuff around here. Oh, this is a treasure chest. You got lots of records. I'm going to take a look at the We've new records here. We've got probably about 2,000 albums up here. Sexorama. <laughs> Anything interesting in here, Sheldon? No, there's stuff piled in front of other items. Excuse the scattered array, but being pickers, I'm sure you've been there before. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Look at that. Titanic. Titanic? Yeah, that's, that's the Titanic. Can I squeeze it by you here? I just want sure. to take a look at this. What a great piece of folk art. Yes. It's oh, it's rustic. It's, a it's reverse painted on glass. And and they've they've actually put a little bit of mother of pearl in here. You can see it with the light. Oh jeez. Just to it, it's fabulous. Look at how out of scale it is. It's yeah. just perfect. Actually, we're connected to that through our family background. Really? My grandmother married a sea captain from the turn of the century. He often walked down to the docks. Happens that the Titanic was there getting set for sale within the next week or so. Right. They tried to convince him to join the officer crew of the Titanic. He did not sail. Titanic has meaning for us not that we actually had a family member on it, yeah, but, but that we didn't have one on it. Exactly. Thank goodness. Exactly. Yeah. That's what you wouldn't be the, here right now. I would not be. <laughs> well, this is something that I would really, wow. really love to have. I'd like to have it, and also, I think it maybe solves a bet, Scott. We had a bet yes. as to who could find the best nautical piece while we were here. Oh, yes? But we had to buy it. Garth, what would it take to part with this piece of folk art? It'd probably come in the five or $600 range, perhaps, maybe 550 575 well, I was thinking four. 
Would you consider four? Ooh, that's a little tight. What about five? How about 450? How about 475? I, I'd almost prefer that you went up. <laughs> I have reasons for that. Oh, oh, I have reasons. 475. Oh, you. Oh, you. Yeah. shake that man's hand oh, for me? Yes. I gotta buy a whole lobster dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Garth, I'm gonna beat you up on that Coke machine first. You know what? I was gonna come at you with five on it just because of the cost of oh shipping my. it. Oh How my. about six? Oh my, oh my. Five wouldn't do six. it. Six. You've been pretty fair overall. You bought a fair bit of stuff, and I appreciate that. Here I go again, giving in. Six. Thank you very much. I'm happy with that. Yeah, I am real happy yeah. with that. Hey, what about the scale? Can we revisit? Yes, but it's not cheap. If a scale could be pretty, this is, it. This is the one. Beautiful thing either way, but that's what helps me, oh, the Canadian yeah. connection. But keeping in mind, we're going to turn this over, hopefully, at a profit. Mm. And I hope I don't insult you, but would you take $1,000? No, definitely not. No? No, I have to come up. 1100 <laughs> It's a deal. I'm not going to give you a chance to change your mind. Thank you very much. You better hurry quick. Thank you very much, because <laughs> I think we got ourselves a scale. I'm uh, so happy, but I'm not showing you what I weigh today. <laughs> OK, I got to beat you up one more time. Oh, my gosh. Hey, we're on a roll. Yeah, your roll. Would you take 501? 501 won't work. What will work? 502. I gotta come up. Done! <laughs> We're leaving with some great items. I think we've made a new friend. It's just been a great day. It doesn't get any better than this for picking. Uh, I'm happy with that. I don't see these very often. I'm happy with that. Real nice. Yeah, in great shape. That scale is a really good item. It's not something you see every day. That was fantastic. Yeah, I enjoyed it too. But you know something yeah. I never do? What? I never say goodbye. See you later. If you're from the far south, Slater. You can keep that. It's a new one. Slater. See you later. Slater. Slater. Hey, that was quite something. What I can't get over, he said that property has been there. He's got a deed to it from 1761. It's a great part of the world, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Around. Nothing poisonous in here, is there? Nothing. I'm over here. I thought this was the bad size, but that's the bad size. What would it take to get it out of here? I'm going to say $50,000. Ain't going to happen. That's yeah! That's the steering wheel for you. It's called a fat man steering wheel. <laughs> you take it to insulting me. Master Cousins, I presume. Yikes! Last guy came through here, he buried under something. Throw down the gauntlet and <laughs> say 15. I'm Scott Cousins. I'm Sheldon Smithen. We're picking. We travel all over Canada, coast to coast, from the West Rocky Mountains to the Eastern Shores, and all the back roads in between. Looking for hidden gems in people's basements, attics, and bars. Sometimes we take a gamble, trust in our gut to make a buck. Just like the people we meet, every story is different. Not junked up. part of Nova Scotia. It's just beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely. Unbelievable. There's a whole province to be picked here with some great old barns. Why would you don't hit a moose? We're golden. <laughs> Apparently, Lunenburg County is the Christmas tree capital of the world and the home of the Blue Nose. Let's hope it's Picker's Paradise. <laughs> exactly. Great old barn. We could be doing some door knocking on this road. Yeah. I think we're gonna do something we haven't done in a little while. We're gonna do some freestyling. That means you're just gonna look on the road, see a house that looks good, see if it's got stuff around it that looks good. You knock on the door, see what happens. There's an old barn. Yeah. 
But it looks like a hay barn. Not likely to be anything in that. I am totally convinced that there's something to buy here, Scott. Yeah, I'm looking for an old tractor out front, maybe a cream separator with a nice couple of barns and an old ratty truck. Not looking for a BMW on the front lawn. Hey, 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 freestyle. This has so all the elements. It really does. An old Victorian house, they got a little bit of, the paint doesn't match. Do you want to stop? Why not? Hello? Anyone home? Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Sorry for snooping around. My name's Scott. Hi, I'm Jeff. How are you, Jeff? Pretty this good. This is my friend Sheldon. How hey. you doing? How you doing? Not we're antique good. pickers, and we're just driving around looking for places that look good, and your place looked perfect. Oh, OK. We were wondering if you had anything you might want to sell. You never know, but I, you can look around. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I spotted something inside the door I wanted to ask you about. All right. You've been snooping already, Scott. But I noticed you had a little piece of advertising right up at the top of the stairs. Yeah, that's been there for a long time. Probably my grandfather had that there. And I know that that's something that I'm going to buy if I can. So it's starting good for me. Can we go up and take a look at it? Sure, come on up. Oh, a workshop in here. Hey, this is where it all happens. Woo. You do some carpentry. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. the fourth generation in here. Wow. My great-grandfather built it. I think in somewhere around 1921, maybe. As we wandered into his shop, I could see Jeff was a real craftsman. And he had a few old bits hanging around here and there, whether they were for sale or not. Well, we were going to find out. Got any old tools? Oh, yeah, but they're <laughs> staying here. You collect old tools? Oh, well, I don't really collect them, but there's been a lot collected up over the years. And yeah? I'm not too anxious to get rid of it. No? Would you part with the sign? I probably would. Yeah? yeah. It's just hanging there. What would you want for that? Look, I don't know what that's worth. Neither do I, but it's cool. <laughs> yeah. It looks like it's probably from the 50s, is my guess. Retro is so in right now, and that is retro. Real colorful, real desirable. I don't know, 20 bucks take it? Listen, it's, no, it's just hanging there anyway, so if you want it for 20 bucks, you take it. OK. Nice. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Yeah. Anytime you can buy something off of a guy's wall the first time you ask, I'm happy about that. Things are looking up. Can we have a peek in this room over here? Sure. Got a set of scales up there. Can I climb up there and take a look at the scales? Yeah. Have a look at it if you want. Sheldon, I'll pass that to you. Warren, Montreal. Huh. Normally, scales aren't a big deal for me, but this one was a nice small. It was just absolutely sweet. Doesn't look like you've used it in the last couple weeks. No. <laughs> By me someday, though. <laughs> uh, OK. It's got this added little rabbit on the weight, which yeah, is I really sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You sure you wouldn't part with that? No, I don't want to part with that. <laughs> I'll put that baby back up, then. I'd love to have that little bunny in my truck. <laughs> Anything else? Lead the way, Jeff. All right. The only other thing is the barn over there, but I don't think there's anything in there I want to part with. It's a pretty good looking barn. The barn itself was just beautiful. I mean, here's this old, late 19th century barn. It was worth the price of admission alone. You got some nice big red wagon wheels in here. That's for an old horse wagon. Wagon wheels are really desirable. People put them on their front lawns. And then I see another one, and I see another one, and I see another one. And then I realize there's a whole wagon there. Hey, Sheldon, are we in the market for a wheeled carriage? I don't know, Scott. That's been in here for whew, probably 35, 40 years. It's a beauty. This wagon probably dates from the 1890s. I mean, it's big, it's heavy, it's hard to move, and everything else. But it's red. <laughs> <laughs> Scott loves red. And he likes big, and that moved a lot of hay, that wagon. If you were going to sell that, what would you want for it? I have no idea. I'm not even sure I want to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Those are two answers I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely thing. If it was up for grabs, we would have thought real hard about that. Anything else we haven't seen so far? We could take a run down to my mother's. She might have something around that you wanna, might find interesting. Sure. How long has your mother lived here? She's lived there since the early 50s. Any time you can get from the barn to the house, that's a good thing. Hi, nice to meet you. And nice they're to wondering nice if you had you. anything around you that uh, you might want to let them look at. Well, there's a few things around. Bertie's a great lady. I mean, how many people are going to let two strangers walk up to their door and then go in their house?
We're looking for tins, signs, toys. Yeah, I think there's an old metal truck in oh, there sometime. Okay. Oh, that's an old baby. Wow, somebody's ridden that one hard. Look, I love toys, and this was a great toy at one time. It's probably a Buddy L truck. That must have been Dave's, and then he gave it to me. Well, that could be. Oh, I think. Yeah. Yeah, this is made in the 1920s, probably. Early 30s, maybe. That toy in real good condition would have been anywhere between $600 and $1,000, and it was beat. Looks it, like you took it for a joyride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I sat on it and shouldn't have. Yeah, and I think you left it out in the rain a few times, too. But it's still sort of a fun little thing. Would you sell that? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want it. What would you want for it? Whatever you think it's worth. I'm not well, going to be sticking you on that one. <laughs> 20 bucks. Yeah, that's good. OK. All right. It would have been a lot more if it had been in better condition. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. He was shocked, I think, that I offered him that much for that toy. And he shook on it. And that was a good thing to have. We'll never get it back to the original paint, but we'll get it looking like a truck again, as opposed to an old wreck. What about the chest itself? Is that something you'd consider selling? It wasn't unusual for a carpenter as an apprentice project to actually be required to build his own trunk. My sister wants to hold on to it for sure, so. Sure. What about that? It looks like a hall stand. Is that? Uh... Yes, it is. Now, that looks like a good piece of Canadiana. I believe my great-grandfather made that. Somebody's done a little bit of turning on a lathe. And... He, he would have done that. He used to have an old foot treadle turning lathe. It was based on a real standard item, the sort of thing you'd see in an Eaton's catalog. Uh, it had a few different features. What's that little thing on the side there? It's a little drip tray. And your brawly would have sat right in there, your brawly or your sticks. So that would have caught the water so you didn't mess your floor up. Exactly. <laughs> that would have been 1890, 1900, maybe even into 1910, they were still popular. Something you'd part with? No because I know my sister wants it if I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> when you're door knocking somebody, you have no expectations because you're imposing on them. So when he says it's not up for grabs, hey, it's not up for grabs. Can I head into that room over there? Is there anything in there? Sure, you can go in, have a look. Hey, Jeff, anytime you want us to come and clean out your basement, <laughs> just give us a call. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> Oh that's, oh, that's a sweetie. Oh, that is the classic. That's Mitchell a little Garcia. one. And I see the mother load fishing stuff, which both Sheldon and I love. And that's 1960s. The, the ball bearings are steel in this. Now they're plastic. And you know what? That's still the best spinning rod you'll ever oh, use. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Would you let that little guy go? No. Nope. I don't blame you. <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. either. Here, Sheldon, I'm going to hand these rods out to you. Doesn't look like anybody's fished with these, Jeff, for a while. No, I know I haven't. <laughs> That's an old creel that I had when I was a kid. Fishing creel is something that a fly fisherman would have used. Fished with one hand, and if he catches a fish, just drops it inside the creel. Fish I catch now won't go in that hole. <laughs> <laughs> or so you say. <laughs> it's not very old. It's probably 60s, is my guess. Probably all right, yeah. Lots of people will actually take an old creel, and they'll screw it to the side of their house and use it as a mailbox. What would you want for that? I don't know. You make me an offer. Well, we bought one yesterday for 15 bucks. We'd give you 15 for this. All right. Thanks, George. Good. <laughs> what would you want for those? Well, I don't think I really want to part with those. You're a hard man. <laughs> <laughs> what about the little belt? That leather's probably 80 years old. It's soft. It's supple. You would have put flies in one compartment, some leader in another compartment. It's just a lovely thing that any fisherman would like to have. And there's a bunch of them that would like to use it. Would you let that little guy go? No, oh, I don't know. 10 bucks? Yeah, I guess so. And what about the rods, Jeff? This one's split cane. I'll buy any split cane rod. It's just a question of price. They made these split cane rods right from the 1890s right up to the 1960s. Yeah. I'd say these were turn of the. 19th into the 20th century, they're good old rods. I don't think I really want to part with this one. I, that one there is kind of going to pieces, maybe. This pretty is pieces. going to pieces. Yeah, I'm pretty this sure. This is a wrong. wall hanger. That's all that is now, is yeah. a wall hanger. 
Yeah. You know, it probably would have been, what, a $75 rod in good condition? Yeah, but the it's wraps probably are... probably a $20, $25 rod tops in that condition. Yeah, $20. Are you okay with that? Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Good. Okay. If we decide to restore it, it's going to cost us a lot, but then we've got a serious fishing rod. I think we've done all the damage we can do in here, Sheldon. Thank you so much. So nice to meet you. You too. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye now. See you later. So I think all we got to do now is unscrew that thing off the wall, and we're done. That truck's a beater. Well played with, as trucks should be. Creels are great. Decorators love them. Fishing collectors love them. Jeff, a pleasure. Thanks a lot because, you know, we cold called you and thanks for showing us your stuff. Yeah. We bought a few things. Thank your mom for us as well. Yes. Yeah, I'll do that. All okay. right. Thanks, All right. Jeff. Thanks a lot. See you later. I'm always surprised when we do a door knock that anybody even answers the door, let alone invites us into their house and sells us stuff. My kind of guy, Jeff, to tell you the truth. You know, I got a lot of time for a guy that you just wander into his property and he says, ah, sure, I'll show you around. Yeah. I want to stop for coffee. We've got picks all over the place. We'll do a little bit of a route. Go to Amherst. Where the heck is Pugwash? Hey, there's Pugwash. <laughs> nice name. <laughs> I hate it. Heck of a way to start the morning. Now the map looks broken in. I believe this one's on you. Why do they all seem to be on me? <laughs> Go. real historic part of Nova Scotia, and we're going to see George the Junkman. When I hear George the Junkman, I hear good things and I hear bad things at the same time. Uh, it's going to be on your side, I believe. I think it's right here. I see a red Indian oh, gas go. <laughs> That would be the spot. Check out the barn. Oh, yeah, the barn's beautiful. What a great little car this Model T is. Isn't it beautiful? When guys start displaying it outside, you can pretty well rest assured there's going to be lots inside each and every building. You must be George. I am. Scott Cousins. And you. I'm Sheldon Smithens. Hi, Sheldon. Well, you got a great spot here, and it looks like you got a ton of stuff. Oh, I like lots of stuff. <laughs> stuff is fun. I'm very much interested in anything old that's local or has a Canadian connection. Are you still collecting? Some things. Gotten a little more refined with what I want. He's a picker. He loves getting into barns, climbing up and down, lifting things. But he can't now, because he's hurt his back. So what aren't you collecting anymore? Well, things that are heavy are less enticing to me now. <laughs> They've always been less enticing to me. <laughs> would you part with either of them? I would tell you the green one. Do you mind if I dig it out a little bit? Not a bit. Just go for it. Can I climb up on the sure, track of this? Sure, on the track, yeah. Sheldon's down low, so I figure I may as well go up high, so we're covering two bases there. And I see this little tricycle. Nothing poisonous in here, is there? No, nothing. I'm out here. <laughs> has that been in there a while or what? Wow, has that been in there a long time? Gosh, I might be able to clean some of that off. It's got that real nice sort of Chrysler airflow design yeah. to it, right? And that's what people are looking for. They're looking for style, an image. Wurlich, Weston, Ontario. I think that's a late 40s, early 50s bicycle. Would you sell that? What would you give me for it? 20 bucks? 25 and it's yours. Deal. Hey, Sheldon, we broke the ice. It always makes me feel good when the first thing I ask about, I get. Because then I'm thinking, I'm going to be able to buy something here. So what do you think on that wheelbarrow? wheelbarrow yeah. I'll part with it, but I want you to make me an offer on it. Your turn, Sheldon. How about 30 bucks? No, it's worth more than that to me to use. So what's it worth? on that wooden wheelbarrow. George, I tried to buy it off him. It's the sort of thing I would pay 50, maybe even stretch myself to 60 or 70 dollars. 
a hundred dollar bill. Let's think on that. At a hundred dollars, I don't think there's any money in it. Didn't we just buy one of these? We did. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Urban oil with the dozer on it. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. In nearly mint condition. Really? Yeah. So I take it you're keeping that one. Well, what do you offer me for it? Well, we paid 20 bucks, and before I could say that's what I paid for a good one, he said, sold. <laughs> sold it is. <laughs> got to bring these things out to the light before I make an offer on them. And when I got it outside, it was rusty. <laughs> you know, I paid 20 for it. I'll probably sell it for 20. <laughs> Have you got room in your truck for a John Deere? <laughs> Only if it's pre-1910. Good answer. <laughs> and I noticed you got a paint sign up there. Right there are a bunch of really saleable signs. If I can get them at the right price, I'm buying every piece of advertising I can find that's in decent condition. The frost and wood sign? It's wood? No, it's tin. And I'm thinking, if I can make a deal on this piece, maybe there's going to be some advertising up for sale. Would you sell that? No, I don't think I will. I love the fact that George values Canadian history. The problem is, that's what we're looking for. Okay, what about the Esso signs you got? No. But what about the Hudson sign? 1930s, beautiful sign. A lot of people would love to have that sign. No. I have a Hudson right there. That's a 1946 truck. Very uncommon. I'm kind of thinking that a couple of pickers should be driving around in a vehicle like that someday. So if somebody came to you with a pocket full of money and said, I'd like to buy it, what would it take to get it out of you? Probably a considerable amount. I'm going to say in the range of $50,000. Ain't going to happen. And I bet you they'd get the sign for free if they did that, right? But I'm not sure he'd sell it for that if I pulled 50000 out. Is any of that stuff up there for sale? You got an old mobile oil, gargoyle. Yeah, oil dispenser up there. It would have sat between the gas pumps, would have been filled with glass bottles with oil in it. Great item, other than the fact that it was absolutely beat. I thought this was the bad side. But that's the bad side. <laughs> So what do you want for this thing? I mean, it's in rough shape, right? Mm. Oh my god, I got I'm married in sure. less time. <laughs> well, what do you think it would be worth if it was perfect? $400. I think he was light at $400 on it, but that wasn't in real good condition. So beat, what do you think it's worth? 40 bucks? I paid more than that for it. What'd you pay for it? I paid 75 for it. So what's your bottom line on that? 100 bucks. 100 dollars I thought was a bit steep. We'll just leave this and then maybe we'll come back to it. I grabbed something that looked to me like a churn of some kind. But what drew me to it was it was green, real pretty. This looks like a little air vent there, see? It had a bunch of wheels inside of it that is typical of what a butter churn is. What does it say on it? What does uh, it say? It says freight churn. churn, so it's probably American. September of 1871. Yeah. And what we'll probably end up doing it if we get it is we'll take, take that, that right off, take the guts out, and some of you use it as a plaque. I'm not sure about these bottom legs. Are you, Sheldon? Yeah, they're right. They're right? Okay. Yeah. So what do you think? What would make you happy? 175 bucks. You're a little higher than I wanted to be. <laughs> Sheldon and I are having trouble buying anything here. This is a really nice item that's up both our alleys. We both love it. We're taking that home. It's just a question of what we're paying for. You're firm at 175. Yeah. Let's just have a break and talk about this, okay? Okay. George, why don't you sit down? I called Sheldon aside because when you're talking a number like that, I want to make sure he likes it as much as I do. I think what we should do is just shake on the 175 because I think he's going to change his mind if we don't do it quickly. Yeah. And then maybe that'll help us in the other room. And I think we got to keep this ball rolling. Okay. We're going to take a chance on it, George. 175. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now we're back in the game. You said you got another shed right now that, over here. Why don't we take a look here and see what we can do? Holy cow. There's some good stuff back here.
George, here's something I'd love to have because I got a thing about French stuff. Yeah, you don't see a, an oil can in French very commonly around here, especially in Arco. What would be a fair price for you to sell that to me for? In French, I think it must be worth 75 bucks. Would you sell it for 75? Because I think I'm in a buying mood. Yeah, no, I don't think I want to sell it. OK. I know these things are near and dear to your heart, just like yeah. they're near and dear to me. I'm just going to point to a couple of them, and you can say yay or nay. OK. OK? The flying antifreeze. No, not for sale. Of course, I got to ask about the Red Indian. <laughs> no. <laughs> the only one I got. OK. You got a couple of old Marvelube tins. Yeah, those are handmade ones. Uh, they're not for sale because they're a neat display and they fit with my automotive collection, so to speak. Now, you got a few of these old Irving oil cans. What would you give me for that? What would you want for it? The pair of them for 20 bucks. You know what? I'm not going to argue with you on that. That's a deal. And I could see that the grease would come off and they're actually in pretty good shape underneath. Scott is very energetic. I wish I had him around for a couple weeks to help me. I could keep him busy. Just for interest's sake, would you part with that? Yeah, yeah, sure. 30 pounds of cod, very typical of the Maritimes. Not bad graphics. Wouldn't that be good to have? Yeah. What would you need? 25 bucks. Sheldon plays his cards closer to his chest, I think. <laughs> would you say 20? Sure. Done. George, you've got a door push. Yeah, I'm not for sale. And you got a Goodyear sign in here, too. Yeah, I don't want to sell it. Sorry. You got a farmer's ice cream sign. Yeah, not for sale, thanks. The gargoyle sign? Not for sale. They got a purchase sign? No, I don't think I'll sell it. It's not even a question of price. It's just not for sale. I, I can deal with the price. I can't deal with it's not for sale. Well, you're getting a sense of what I like. Is there anything that you think I would like that you, you're willing to part with? I could sell you this, and you could put it around your neck. So that you'll know I'm coming? be able to keep track of where you're at. <laughs> Try it on. It'll be just right. It's just one more thing. What's that? I'm going to shake your hand at 100 bucks on the gargoyle thing in the back. I thought this is the bad side, but that's the bad side. 100 bucks. That's what you wanted for it. That's what you're getting for it. Is there anything in the house we should look at? It's a sampler. It's got the date of 1837. It's got who made it on the other side. The sampler is an old piece of textile that was generally done by young girls to show their proficiency in sewing. It would have been sort of part of her education That's right. to and make this sampler. She was 12 years old when she did that in 1837. And that was the little girl that lived in that this lived house? lived in this house. It's one I'd be very happy to have in my collection. You know, that to me, I don't know, Sheldon, $1,000, $1,500 sampler, that's a yes. good thing. Hard to find a good Canadiana piece like that. Very valuable. That's the best sampler that anybody in Canada has seen for a long time. George, I know this is likely not for sale, but I got to ask. Uh, it's not for sale. It's a very close piece to this family in this house. Hanging in the same spot? It's been in that same spot since this wallpaper was put on this room. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that looks like fun. It's an old Emerson TV. But he did have this goofy old TV case. The guts were long gone, but the case was kind of fun. It's the Howdy Doody Show. <laughs> <laughs> Is that something that you'd uh, part with? Yeah. Yeah, I could see that going away. What would you want for that? 30 bucks. Let's go for it, George. Sold. Just because Scott looks so good on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody would use that as like a little showcase or something. It's a pretty green thing, and it'll clean up really good. The nice thing about that oil dispenser is the graphic on it of the gargoyle. So we bought a few things. 
and we left you some really cool things. Yeah. Maybe I'll be by again. Well, you take care of yourself, OK? Thank you, guys. And right, we'll see you again. You. All right. Well, we didn't fill the van up today. We did establish a relationship. And if George wants to sell something, we're pretty comfortable he'll be calling us. But it was nice to get something good. And that churn is something good. We're heading up to the Northumberland shores of Nova Scotia, and we're off to Pugwash. Love that name. Apparently, it's Mi'kmaq, means shallow water. I'm not worried about the rain, because I've got my lucky hat on today. You got the dwarf middle. Exactly. Yeah, we've got a Pugwash that has a population of about 1,000 people, and an uh, old village, very picturesque. This is definitely lobster fishing territory. Look at this guy on the right. Yeah. He's got fish nets. Now watch. He's oh, that's a nets. barge. Yeah, we've got a lead on uh, Pick. We're going to see Victor. I think Victor has been collecting automobiles, gas pumps. Eclectic is the way he described what he's selling. Well, that can be good. I think this, this is, is it. looking like a likely spot right here. This is it. Oh, there's a gas pump. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Classic cars. Oh, some old cars, yeah. It'd be Victor. I'm Sheldon. Nice to meet hey, you. Hey, Victor, how are you? Scott, Scott Cousins. Scott. Nice to meet you. That's what hilarious. a great shop you have here. So how long have you been doing this? Restoring vehicles. I bought that 30 line Chev, 1958. The deal was made for $25, and I brought it home. He used to teach auto body to hearing impaired children. He knows his stuff, and he had some good things to show us. I've come to an age where I got to start downsizing. I noticed you've got some nice signs on the outside decorates it up a little bit. Even the wife likes it, you know? I like this one right here. I assume from what you're telling me that if your wife likes it, that the stuff on the outside's not for sale? Well, no, that's what she told me the other day. I'm just on this shit here, that's all. Hey, Victor, that oh. gas pump you got, the visible? Yeah. Is that an original? That's an original top. You don't see those that often anymore? I've been offered quite a little bit for it, but I haven't really. So what have you been offered? Five grand. Wow. And I said no. I just don't get it. With the sleigh bee for sale? Yep. Oh, yeah. Well, I know we just got here, but what would you want for something like that? You're doing the buy, eh? Yeah, but you're doing the... You're, <laughs> we can't be buyer and seller both. You're the seller. What do you want for it? The sled is probably between the two world wars. It's been well used. That's just character as far as I'm concerned. 40 bucks. How about 30 and we strike the first deal of the day? How about 35? How about 35? All right. Well, we cracked the ice. <laughs> Good man. Yeah, where do we go from here, Victor? Can I just sort of snoop around? You go right ahead. I love when we break the ice quickly. Chances are, if we see some things we like, we're going to be able to do business. Yeah, it's still got the grease in it. It's not in the greatest condition I've ever seen, but it is a white rose tin. It is a white rose tin. So what would you want for something like that? 30 bucks. Yeah, I think that's about retail on it. That's Is it? A, yeah, that's about what I would sell it I for. I heard it was 40 retail, but <laughs> <laughs> Inflation in the East Coast. East Coast. Well, let's see if we can put a pile of stuff together and okay. they come back to that little one. OK. You got a little inventory here, it looks like, Jack. Yikes. Last guy came through here, he's buried under something, right? <laughs> it could be. <laughs> yeah, as I walk up the stairs, I see that he's just chock-a-block full, mostly car stuff. But it's sort of interesting. Nice old wood wheel with a suicide. No, that's no, not for it. suicide, sir. What is it? That's what they call a steering wheel for you to get in an old car. It's called a fat man steering wheel. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you're in, you've, you've taken to insulting me this early in the game. That's going probably on my Hudson over there. Yeah, so I, I know it's not for sale, so we won't belabor the point. Guys that work on automobiles and they're serious acquirers, very few of them will actually let go. There's always that, I maybe could use this, or my buddy down the road could use this. The diesel oil can, is that filled with stuff? No. Is it empty? It's empty. What would you want for that? 25. Can you pull that out of there, Sheldon? You bet. Can you take a look at it? And you don't see Irving out in Alberta. That's the only reason it has any interest to me is because it's Irving, which is East Coast. They're probably the biggest oil and gas company in the Maritimes. They've been around for decades and decades. It's like a father to son to son deal. That stuff can be highly collectible. 20 bucks? 25, I think. I know. 20 bucks? 25. 20 bucks? Good shape, man. Hey, Victor, you're oh, yeah. hard, man. You're going to be the little give, a little I take, gave, a little I, goodbye. I gave him five down below. Yeah, so you're going nice. to give me five here? 20 you, bucks? Good man. OK. You're, you're hard, you're hard. I'm trying to make money here, buddy. I know you are. He is hard, but he's fair. Hey, Scott, they, Victor knew we were coming. Yes, two for you. Little known fact, this country was settled because of these, these hats. These people. The Shorn they are beaver. the beaver hats. Yeah, too. and these yeah. are beaver. Yeah. Hudson's Bay Company, they needed pelts, and that's what they needed them for, was for hats in London. I can't believe you made me put it on. Oh, yeah, I see you got the one without the mouse droppings in it. Yeah. <laughs> and I guessed right and chose the right one, too. <laughs> Master Cousins, I presume. Ah. I didn't look beforehand. Yeah. But I don't think we need hats. Uh, we got hats. I don't need those hats. <laughs> we got hats. <laughs> There's an oiler up there for a train. Does it say CP or CN? I don't know what it says. I'm just hoping I can get up there without killing anybody. And I could see from looking at it, it was pretty old. Okay. Leeds, so it's English. Oh, is it? But it is sort of fun. It's a cool little thing. What would you want for that? 45. You got your name, like, where do you get these prices from? People have asked me before. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Scotty, I don't think we're the first pickers to be here. I think he's been dealing before. Are you negotiable at all on this? What did I say? You said 45. I'm sure he said 25. I'll come down five, sure. Five's <laughs> not very much. <laughs> Scott and I are having some fun. Victor was too, for that matter, and he enjoyed showing off his wares. See, I would have offered you 34. Did you say 35? Did I hear 35? 35? Okay, we can do 35. There you are. I might have put an extra five or ten dollars on each item so that I knew they were going to make me down, maybe. Sheldon, I think we've seen what we can see here. I think we should head down to one of the other sheds. Take you for a drive in the Aldi. All right. That's yeah. <laughs> Bonnie and Clyde, here we come. Victor's prized possession was his Chevy. And Victor and his wife had just driven across the country in a vintage automobile. Just an amazing story. Yeah, I love it. That'll be five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that is a beauty. That's oh, a thing of beauty. beauty that. It is, yeah. That cost me 400 bucks. I'm yeah. sure it did. <laughs> Here. That's a 55 Lincoln from California. No rust. This will be gorgeous. There's your four-man box. I see. Is it painted on the on the upside? I couldn't tell you. What would you want for it before I start well, it's, crawling uh, up? The there. other one was two-man, so this four-man, that's double. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Same paint job. This one was a little longer. You could get the whole family on it. This one's being cobbled a bit at the front. They had to put this on so they could keep it together. Victor, I think this one, to me, is worth 40 bucks. Sure. All right. Thank you, sir. Something odd about that yeah. sign. It's usually green and orange, right? There's two different colors. I have the other green and orange down below. The BA sign is a British American oil company. One of the reasons advertising is so highly desirable is because it was never meant to be a collectible. That would have been on the side of an old gas station. Yeah. So they hung out on the outside of buildings. They were exposed to the weather. They were exposed to kids shooting them. So to get a good sign in good condition is a tough thing to do. What would you want for something like that? Oh, 500. Huh. Well, Just, you know your retail prices, I was, I was gonna say, <laughs> down to the other shop. Okay. I'll let you lead the way. Oh yeah, here we go.
see you got some more signs in here. Two Victor. more, yeah. What's your pricing like on these signs? They're about the same as the one up above. They're getting hard to find. Break battery. I'd spotted an old battery servicing case at the gas station. The attendant would carry that out to your car, tested your battery, put the water in, and everything else. That's a gem. Well, I wouldn't exactly call it a gem. Not, not a thing wrong it's, with it. It's a good thing. I'll give it that. <laughs> to me, it would be a gem if it said on the side of it, Red Indian you know, oil. I know that. Yeah. 20 bucks? Oh. Well, 30. If, I, if I'm going to sell it for 40 to 50, I can't pay 30, okay? Know, you, you can. Remember when I said you owe me one? How much did you say, 25? 20, I said. 25, I thought you had it. 25. How about some oil cans? Look at that. Unfortunately, it's an antifreeze tin and not an oil and gas tin, right? I, I have to say, that's a nice deck of It least. is. So, what would you like for that? 15. That's a good pier stuff. It's an average one. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, throw down the gauntlet. Let's <laughs> say 15. Okay, here, 15. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anywhere else? Was that bus over there, but you... What's in the bus? There's an old Barbie doll car in there, maybe. A little one, a plastic one or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I saw the refuse of a hundred junkyards inside that bus. Holy Whoa. smoke! Watch yourself, Scott. Whoa! And that bus was pungent. Old country golden hymns. Do you know what I did? He what did he? Well, did, did he fill this up, back it in here, and leave it here? How did he get in there? When was the last time you had a tetanus shot? Exactly. Tonight. Okay, I'm out of here. Have you been deep? I've been deep. Damn, it ain't pretty. <laughs> What's Victor thinking? You know what? I don't know what's sicker. The fact that he has a Barbie doll car in here or that he knows it's in here. It was kind of a retirement plan. <laughs> project. The project should be clearing that stuff out. Like, have you thought of psychotherapy? No, not really. No, no, no. Well, I think I got out of here pants intact. I'm not sure about anything else. Hey, I actually see something here that's sort of interesting. No, oh, he's found a treasure, I think. Yeah, you got a couple bicycles in here. This one's a Murray. Murray, yes. They were more famous for making pedal cars than for bicycles. Yeah, I think that's the only one they made. It's pretty rare. Seventy-five, sir. I thought, you know what? It could be worth that. I want to get it down and see what kind of condition it is in. It's just that last little bit of handlebar, guys. Hold on. There. Oh, there. We just knocked 10 bucks off the price, Victor. What a shame all the rust, because that's got oh. some style to it. This was sitting outside for a long time before you oh, put I it got dead. It. Yeah. But I couldn't resist, man. I, I know what you're saying. I, I mean, it's got great lines. It's got that 60 space age yeah. design to it. This is supposed to be pretended to be a gas tank. Yep. It's got the great pullback handlebars. I think it's probably a rare bike. Yep. It's just beat. One time offer. Don't care if you say no. 40 bucks. Okay. Well, at least you got it out for the next guy that okay, comes so along. I bring it over here, then. You know, there's just no money in it for us, right? Okay. If Better that wasn't rusty. That's not rust. I think it's just like mildew on it, isn't it? Jay, I got a cloth with some oil in it. Well, there is some rust there for sure. If you put a lot of effort in that, I think you could bring some color back with oil. What is the best you would do on it? I told you what, 75. Yeah. Well, I'll drop down to 60. 60, and you help Scott load it into the Not truck. Into the All right. We got a deal at 60. I enjoyed them, really enjoyed them. Yeah, let me put this in first, though, because we've only got so much room. In Nova Scotia, I seem to be running across all sorts of winter sports. Nice visual, and we don't have them out west, so somebody's going to want to throw that in their collection. With a good oiling, that bike might actually look not bad. Ah! 
I wish I could have bought some more stuff off oh, you, but well. you like it as much as I do. Maybe the next time. <laughs> Maybe the <laughs> next, next time. time. You folls have a good journey and hope you enjoy Nova Scotia. Love yeah. it. Okay. And safe travels in those little oh, cars. Oh, we, we enjoy them. I've never met a car collector I don't like. They're people people. Victor was one of those as well. Thanks a lot. See you now. See you later. Happy trails. Hard guy to buy from, but he's oh. a good guy. Those photos that you sent to the appraiser, he must have had a chance to look at them by now. He should be able to give us an idea. I've seen a lot of butter churns in the last little while in Nova but Scotia. That one we got was exceptional. It's got a good look to it. It's stenciling just puts it visually far and above any other butter churn I've seen for a long time. What about just pulling in here and giving them a call? I called one of my buddies back in Calgary to see if he could help us out. He gave me the name of a person he knows in Amherst. Hello, is that you, Don? Yes, it is. You get those photos? Yes, I got your photos. Have you ever seen one with stenciling like that? Yes, a long time ago. You don't see them very often, but once in a while. 175 bucks. That turn is a value of about 2,500. Thanks for taking the time for us. No problem. Wow, I feel good about that. <laughs> That's a lot more than I thought. Do I have to pay for it first, or can I eat it first? Perfect. Mmm. We meet great people everywhere, but the people here, it's just like being home, isn't it? And the history of that butter churn is about 135 years older than Alberta. <laughs> Thank you.